Hi everybody, welcome back. It's time for another video. We're gonna look at the old 250 ES here, which is now 250 ESX. Um, I call it that because of the front end. It's got a, a 350X front end on it. Anyway, we'll talk about that later, maybe even do a video. We'll talk about some of the benefits of that uh, maybe later on. So today our focus is the oil cooler. It took me about almost two years to decide and make decisions on or lift these fenders up. You can kind of see that big shiny thing over there. Um, that's our oil cooler. It's 12 inches long by about four inches around. I won't discuss all the things I thought about while I was doing this. One of the big things is the story that I tell. Uh, there was a guy on one of the websites I go to, uh, I won't mention names. Um, pretty important uh, guy on there for a lot of reasons. But uh, I was on there talking about on a blog, hey, Anybody have any ideas for putting an oil cooler on? No one said anything. There was nothing previously listed or marked down in any discussions about an oil cooler on this. A lot of people were like, why bother? It's a 250. So he said, yeah, for $85, I'll send you what you need. And he was talking about mounting it, a radiator style cooler on the back of the air box, which has almost no airflow to it. Um, while I think that would probably help, I just don't think it's the most bang for the buck. So after searching around a little bit, I got on eBay found this uh, tube type oil cooler which they say is made out of uh, weapons grade aluminum. I just happened to have these U-bolt uh, clamps that were perfect for this job. They were the right size and diameter to go around the tubing. You can see. Why did I mount it at an angle like this? Well, we had originally mounted it across this top bar here, but it was so big around it either interrupted the, the fender or it touched this wheel. And I've swapped my wheels out. I, I use this bike to take out my garbage. I use it for everything. It's integrated into everything I do. We mow the grass and everything with it. So a couple of things that you need to consider are clearance and height and in, in, inside and outside measurements to the wheels and tires. So we ended up going with this configuration because it will work with both either set of tires that I use. The other thing you need to know about is I use a lift bracket. One you can buy that's already made, it's nice, it's lightweight, it's aluminum, they come in different colors, probably two, three dollars each, you can get them on eBay. The name of the seller was High Autopia at the time when I did this about two years ago. I've talked about this before, and my lovely assistant's going to point you to the back of the bike here where you're going to see the anodized blue one that I use. Okay, you can see that in there, you can see my custom made shop cover that I got made by one of the sellers on eBay. Okay, so that's almost two inches of lift. And then on each wheel, we've got the wheel spacers. So that pushes the wheels out. These SS212s, those two inch spacers right, oh, right in there. That's the spacer there between the wheel and the hub. So that's a two inch spacer. If you wanna get cool aftermarket wheels, you will need some spacers on your hubs. So with that said, keep in mind to have my setup, you know, it may or may not impact you. Taking a stock bike and putting an oil cooler on it may be more challenging, it may be less. It also depends on what size and style tube you use. So anyway, this oil cooler came with some fittings that you do not see on here. They came with some what they call 6AN or, or AN6. That's the size of the, the barb, the tube fitting. Um, these are AN4. So I went down to, I carried my AN6 fitting uh, NPT uh, pipe thread on one end and uh, three quarter inch pipe thread on one end and AN6 on the other, barb fitting. I took it down to Ace Hardware, I walked in, the guy goes, you want quarter? And I said, yep. Yeah. I said, I, th I thought I need AN4. He goes, no, quarter should be what, what you need quarter or four is probably pretty close to the same thing. So that's what I got. He gave me these, they worked fine. Next I ordered this braided hose line. It is also AN4 or quarter inch uh, stainless steel braided hose to fit that. If my lovely assistant will follow me around on the other side of the bike, you will see that the factory um, steel oil line was cut using a tubing cutter and you'll see up here at the top too is probably a little easier to see I left probably an inch or two on each of these that steel line probably comes down inside this hose about this far 
the more length you leave, the, le the more options you have down the road. If any of this frays or tears up or gets cut, I'll have plenty of line on both sides of this thing um, to connect this hose to. There's also plenty of slack in here. Now you see how stiff this is? It hardly even moves. What I used was just a piece of fuel line about three, three feet long. Just a piece of fuel line. And I routed it through around to where I wanted because it was very flexible. You get the idea. However you want it to run. When I worked it around to where I wanted it to be, I said to myself, okay, I'm going to put a marker line on here for how long I want it to be. I held it up to my roll of stainless steel line, and I lined it up with my marker line, and I cut this off using a grinder with a cutting wheel on it. But before you cut, you can't just cut because it frays everywhere and goes everywhere. You wrap it with duct tape really tight to cut it on the line where you marked it. Once you've got that done, then you route it through. I wanted it to look like I really planned for this, and I wanted it to look nice. I want it to be stable. I don't want this stuff, which can act like a saw blade when it's up against other things, to scrape all the paint and coatings off my wires. So I bought one of these little um, AN4 clamps, anodized. I bought a second one from the same people, and I clamped it in front of and in back of. This is right over the starter, and this is right over the swing arm. Clamped them, wrapped them, rewrapped them with duct tape after I got done, put them on. Important note, don't install these lines until your very, very last thing when you're absolutely certain you've got your hose clamps ready to go on and everything, because once you push these hoses onto these barbed hose connections, you won't get them back off very easily, and then you'll be mad at yourself. So just something to think about. Um, I cut, like I said, I do everything with this bike. Normally it's about, gets to be 100 degrees here all summer long for days and days on end. When I first cranked this thing up and ran it, when I, when I first cranked this thing up and ran it, um, it was about 55 degrees outside. I ran it for 30 minutes. And once I was certain we were oiling okay, um, man, I, I ran it hard and um, that cooler was just barely warm to the touch. So, um, it, I can already see the benefits of having it. I'm glad I did it, I don't have any regrets about it. It adds, just for your information, it adds almost a quart of oil to the system, um, which is kind of nice. Um, everybody would like to have more oil in their system for protection, for peace of mind. Uh, my wheel, in, a, in all eventuality, the tire that is spinning next to the cooler is my fan, um, if that makes sense to you. Um, so we got plenty of circulating air. Um, I can't think of any downside thus far uh, uh, to having this well cooler connected. Um, anyway, I hope that you all have enjoyed this. I hope I gave you enough information. Again, everything you're working with is quarter, quarter AN stainless steel line tape it before you cut it. Another thing that I did was um, was this. Once I got my oil lines uh, connected at three points, once I got my oil lines connected at three points, I simply shut off the spark to the engine. I turned on the ignition and I used the start button to crank this thing over and over and over again until I had oil line uh, oil pumping through the lines. I had a bucket set up on the other side where I could see the oil pumping out of the fitting. Okay? So I, before I went and cranked anything up, I made sure that I had plenty of oil flow. I had added my extra quart of oil or, or 0.8 quarts of oil and I pumped it and pumped it and ran it until I had plenty of oil gushing out the other end and then I connected it. One other real important piece since we're talking about oil flow, um, lovely assistant, if you'll come back over here. Something else I did um, that I nearly forgot to tell you about, and it could be a big deal. This is a banjo bolt, and it holds this oil, this oil banjo onto the case of the engine. If you were to pull this banjo bolt out, you would see that there's a little porthole on it that allows the oil to come through. I drilled those out uh, just a little bit. So if, if you decide you want to do this and you pull the banjo out and look at it, just go up one size and clean that banjo out 
and then use uh, use some sandpaper to clean up the burrs and make it nice and neat. Um, not rocket science, actually pretty simple stuff just to improve flow because now we've got all this extra length. I ordered seven inches of, of this stainless steel line, seven feet I ordered. I cut it down, this is what I have left. I have approximately two feet of it left. So it's got five feet plus uh, the double pass on that cooler. So all in all, we've got about seven feet of, of length that that oil needs to travel before it gets full cycle. So keep that in mind. You want to improve flow by drilling out those banjos just a little bit. Anybody has any questions about them, I'm certainly willing to talk about it. But that's pretty much it. Um, appreciate you guys. Um, just for giggles. Crank it up for you so you can hear it running. Piece of cake. Of course, I warmed it up a little before I did the video, so I wouldn't uh, make a mockery of myself. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope this is something that you can use for yourself. Uh, definitely an upgrade worth doing. Maybe we'll do a video in the future on that front end if anybody's interested. Hope you guys take care.